if you can tell a story about <coughs> about your experience with English language and give us some advices about how to improve it. I speak four languages and I learned all of them. Like right now, this is, this is very very important. Yes. Can you repeat it? Yeah, you have a, you have to have a vision of yourself speaking that language. It almost feels like it's not you. It's not your own personality when you just start speaking a new language. You will you will start getting more comfortable with the idea of yourself speaking that language. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. Like it can be fun. Like the advice is that you can give to young people wants to live the life that that you are living right now. Bali is a great place. If you're planning, if you're, if you want to focus on being successful, they've managed to make up to five thousand dollars a week, actually. Salam alaikum, dear friends. Welcome to our channel. So, today, inshallah, for the podcast, we are with Matteo. So, Matteo, I'm going to ask you the first thing: how do you learn languages? By the way, he is doing four languages. So, I'm going to ask you how do you learn languages? I mean, the English language. Exactly. This is the first thing. The second thing I'm going to ask you is how do you learn languages? كيفاش انك تجي تعيش هنا في بالي وشحال ديال الفلوس خاصك باش تعيش هنا في بالي ايضا الخدامي اللي تقدر تخدمهم وتعيش هنا في بالي سو so, وهذه الفكره هذه جات من انني درت بودكاست حول كتاب ديال العادات الذريه وهذا البودكاست هذا مشى فايرو يعني بزاف ديال الناس عجبهم سو so, قلت علاش ما نديرش بودكاست مع ناس نون نيتيف سبيكرز يعني متحدثين غير اصلين باللغه اول حاجه يشاركوا معنا كيفاش تعلموا اللغه وثاني حاجه يشاركوا معنا كيفاش كيدخلوا فلوس وشنو هما الطرق اللي نقدروا حتى حنا ندخلوا بهم فلوس اوكي تفرج الفيديو من الاول حتى الاخر فيه بزاف ديال لي زانفورماسيون غادي غادي نفيدوك ضروري في حياتك ما تسكيبي حتى بارت انا متاكد انه غادي يعجبك الفيديو سو وي هاف هير اي سبيشال جيست سو What's your name? Mateo. Hi. Mateo. Hi yes. everyone. Say hi to my my hi audience. Hi everyone. Hi. So, uh Mateo today uh we're going to speak uh about different things and especially about your career and and uh how to choose uh how you choose that that lifestyle. So first, uh Mateo, where are you from? I'm from Italy. From I'm from Italy. Croatia. Hello nice. uh do you know some some words in Arabic? Shukran. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So oh, another one? Ooh. That come to my mind right now. No. Uh -huh. Shukran. And uh no no <laughs> not no, the no, bad no, ones. No way, no way. <laughs> I think shukran is the the one good one that I know. Nice. Yes. So what Baba you, is dead, right? Yes, Baba, exactly. Yeah, so what do you think about Morocco? Ah, uh, it's uh, one of my your, favorite your, trips. Your, your experience about Morocco. It was one of the best trips I ever had. To really? Be what was you like in Morocco? I I love the Arab culture in general and mm -hmm. it was the first time I ever seen the desert which was one of those places that i thought i would only see in the movies and once i was there it was such a deep experience yeah uh, in general i loved the food i loved the people i had people asking me to come to their place to get a tea mm -hmm. like they would just see me in the street and they would ask me if i want to come over to their place to get some tea it was just amazing i felt so welcome and so comfortable It was pretty hot because yeah. I went in July, <laughs> so yeah, <a> lot. <laughs> especially around fashion ship shower, and it was like almost fifty degrees. But honestly, it was such a great experience. I also went with two very close friends, so we managed to share this experience together. And I can say that it's one of those trips that I hold dearest to me. Nice, definitely top three trips of my life. No, it's fantastic. Do you recommend um, to your friends coming to Morocco? Absolutely. I mean, as I told you, like I loved it so much that I would actually love to even take more people there. I wouldn't right. say that I'm an expert about it, but you know, I think I've seen enough places to know what to recommend, mm -hmm. and especially, I think Shashawan was 
one of the most magical and unique places I've ever been at. He's like, what do you like in Tushawa? First of all, I think it's the place where the people have been the most welcoming. Yeah. Uh, yeah also, like, for the eyes, just so beautiful. Like, everything blue, it's just something you'll never see anywhere else in the world. I don't think there is a town that looks like Shevshaw. Yeah. And it was just an amazing vibe. I wish I stayed longer. I only stayed for one day because it, my trip to Morocco was uh, very, very quick. It was seven days, but seven days that felt like a month because we did so much. We started in Marrakesh, then we went to Merzouga, and then, you know, Atlas Mountains, through the desert, to Fez, Shefshaw, and Tangier, all in one week, pretty much. Fantastic. It was so intense, and I want to go back. I want to see the coast. You know, I know it's a big surfer spot. I'm not a surfer, not even close, but it's definitely one of those places that I want to see. Nice, fantastic. So, um, how many countries do you visit? I think I visited around 40 countries in the last two years, I would say. It could be 35 to 40 countries, yeah. 35? Uh, 35 for sure. 40 probably. Wow. I, I stopped counting after a while, you know. <laughs> nice, 35. Yes. So, what's the first country? Uh, I I was living in the Netherlands and the first country I went to was Argentina. Wow. Uh, to be honest, the reason was the weather. I was around February, March, so at that time I hadn't seen the sun since August, September, you know. So all I wanted was the place where it's warm and sunny and Argentina was the place. And being Italian, Argentina is a country that I feel very close to because Argentinians are pretty much, most of them are Italian. They have Italian origins, we, we live the same way, and uh, we, we love the same things about life. Nice. So I felt very comfortable from the first day there, and it was the perfect way to start. Nice, fantastic. Yeah. So what is the most beautiful country for you? Uh, it's very hard to say because I think Every country is unique in its own way, and especially when you move from one continent to the other, you see completely different things. And what I like is seeing something new. That's what excites me. It's not about anything specific, but just I feel alive when I see an, a, something different, a new culture, a new way of living, a new way of seeing life. Exactly. So... I have to say Argentina because it's just like, first of all, it's special because it's the, where it all started and I feel very close to it. But there's many honorable mentions like Brazil is just magical. Morocco, as I said, for me was a life changing trip. Um, I love many countries in Europe, especially Spain, but it doesn't bring me that cultural shock that I looked to look for so maybe I, I wouldn't focus too much on Europe but Zanzibar was amazing um, most beautiful beach I've ever seen probably crystal clear water amazing culture as well and in Asia I would say Thailand was just amazing mm -hmm. uh, also just very beautiful and th this type of lifestyle that just makes me forget about the rest of the world it just once you're in thailand you forget about the rest it really is like a little a little trap you know right and and, and this is um a question that i want to ask you is why you choose bali to live bali is special because bali is is a place where I feel like I can be the best version of myself. Uh, it's a place full of opportunities. There are so many people uh, that are focused on their goal here. And I hang out with a lot of people who are focused on the goal and automatically 
I start doing that too. And I feel like every morning I wake up in Bali, I'm ready to do something new, learn something new, uh, ready to see the oppor- to seize the opportunities. And in general, it it really gives me a lot of energy. I feel so energetic in Bali compared to other places. Nice, fantastic. So, why uh, you didn't follow the, um, the the ordinary path, the ordinary way that most of people follow? Um, study, get a job, and stay in your home country and work, 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 work. Why you choose to to move to move around to? see other countries well it kind of felt right uh, it wasn't really a decision it almost felt like it was what I was supposed to do it's also the story of my life because when I was still a teenager I moved to Croatia from Italy so it almost became part of my identity right. to to go to a new place where you don't know anyone and kind of start a new life it's something very exciting for me Um, also, I went to the United States by myself at 16. Well, you know, I, I was one of those kids, like most European kids who grew up maybe watching American movies or playing uh, video games based in the United States. So for me, it was always the dream. I always dreamt about the United States, especially New York, that was the place where I thought I would spend the rest of my life. Um, it's the first country where I moved by myself at 19. And I am glad I did it because I think that if I didn't, I would probably still think that it's what I want. But after moving there, I realized that it's not what it's made out to be. I think if you're a middle class man or woman, uh, the quality of life is a lot better in, in Europe. And I found myself, I, I don't know why exactly, precisely, but I realized that most of the friends I made in the United States in the end were not from the United States. So I think there was kind of a disconnection with the with the community there. I didn't feel at home like I thought I would. Well, I went back home to Croatia for six months where I had probably the worst period of my life because I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no plan and I was working at a bakery in my neighborhood, which was not really what I was dreaming of. Um, After a few months, I started feeling the urge to just get out, experience things. I had a few job interviews. I was ready to move anywhere. I didn't really care about where I was going. I just wanted to be in a new place, just experience new things. So I came close to moving to South Africa. I came close to moving to China even. And just because of a few small reasons, mostly financial, I couldn't go through with that. So I decided at one point to just buy a ticket to Ireland and without a job, just go to Ireland and see what happens. And that was the plan. But before I could move to Ireland, I got a job in Amsterdam. And that just sounded like the place to be. I, I forgot about Ireland. I put that ticket to the side and I flew to Amsterdam and that was probably the best decision I could have made. Nice, fantastic. So how do you improve your English language? So if you can tell a story about <coughs> about your experience with English language and give us some advices about how to improve it. I always loved languages ever since I was a kid. I think even I'm sorry. By the way, Matteo has how many languages? I speak four languages. Four fluently. languages. Four languages. Yeah. Just fantastic, bro. Yes. Yes. Spanish, Italian, Croatian and English. 
Yes. <laughs> so, how do you improve your English language? Well, I was always the kid who was able to uh, get good grades in languages without studying. It was honestly my talent. As a kid, I thought that my job was going to be a translator. Wow. So, it was already something that I was really into. It all started with my first big passion as a teenager, as a 12, maybe even 11 year old, which was playing video games. And I used to play FIFA a lot and I used to uh, follow YouTubers that would just play video games and start talking about it. And to be honest, in the beginning, I didn't even know what they were saying. But I just liked hearing it, and uh, I just... It was like company for me. I would play video games, and meanwhile I was hearing someone doing the same thing, speaking about it, even if I didn't understand it. Yeah. With some time, I started understanding a little more and more. And when I moved to Croatia, it was also a tool for me to communicate with people because I didn't speak Croatian at the time so since I spoke a little bit of English that was my way to communicate and the real game changer was when I fell in love with a girl from the United States <laughs> <laughs> that was very lucky <laughs> nice. yes so I had a girlfriend for two years uh, and she was American and you know hanging out every day it just was very natural i i really adopted the language even though we were in croatia and it was it would have made more sense for her to learn croatian than for me to learn english i just really pushed the english language because i really wanted to to learn it well and i think after six months with her it was constant learning, you know, maybe she would make fun of me as a joke of uh, like the way I would pronounce things and stuff. So I would I would remember how not to pronounce things, how not to say things. And it really worked out because I think after one year, I was pretty much fluent in English. And now what, it's the language. What's that the think. what's the tips that you think that you follow okay i think the most important thing is to surround yourself by the language studying a language uh is good of course studying the grammar rules and everything but you have to get out of your comfort zone you have to speak and that's the problem often that many people they uh read about it they just listen or maybe they just follow a few uh guidelines on the conversations to have but if you immerse yourself in the language and you maybe make friends who speak that language that's the best way to do it i speak four languages and i learned all of them by being in the country where that's the language that they speak and it's very tightly connected with my passion for traveling uh, nice we can say can say practicing language is the most powerful tool that you live need. the language live the language uh, also and uh, surround yourself with surround people. yourself with people that speak that language and also one thing that i really do often is i have a vision about it i see myself speaking that language like right now this is, this is very very important yes. can you repeat it yeah, you have, uh, you have to have a vision of yourself speaking that language. You have to see yourself speaking it because it's out of your comfort zone. It's something you've never done and it almost feels like it's not you. It's not your own personality when you just start speaking a new language. So just when you, viv you can uh, have a vision about it, you will, you will start getting more comfortable with the idea of yourself speaking that language. And it doesn't matter if you make mistakes, like, it can be fun. Like, I'm starting to learn French now, and we have a common friend who yeah. speaks French. I mean, yes. he is French. Na na like Nabil. Nabil, yes. Yeah. 
and uh, I love speaking to him in French and sometimes I say things that make no sense but it doesn't matter it's funny and often he will actually tell me whoa that's actually correct and I had no idea that it was gonna be correct but that's how you learn and it has to be fun uh, and just there's no reason to be uncomfortable about it because people will always appreciate it when you try to speak their language because I always put it as a joke I don't I mean I meet people from all over the world often I say I'm Italian and people try to say things in Italian and most of the times they say the things wrong but for me it's just fun to hear them try and like hear what they know what they hear about my country it's a, a cultural exchange also I think it's beautiful Nice. So the steps that you follow exactly, first listening or speaking directly? Well, both, I would say, In both parts of the conversation. Obviously, if you listen, you, you learn a lot. Asking questions is very important. You know, I, you have to be curious also. Like, you can't really learn something if you're not curious about it. I ask a lot of questions uh to even maybe in spanish that i think i speak fluently but obviously i don't know every single thing about it i ask questions about it with french as well i ask my friends hey, how do you say this how do you say that it, you just have to be curious it, you have to really want to learn it and yeah uh, do you think that you're gonna uh you need to know everything about um a specific language or you don't need to I don't think you need to know everything. Uh, it's very common to not know everything, to make some mistakes that you repeat often. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can be fluent with still some mistakes here and there. My mother's uh, mother tongue is Croatian. Uh, she lived in Italy for 25 years. And she's fluent in Italian, but she still makes those couple of mistakes then it doesn't matter how many times you tell her uh, that's not how you say it she will still say it but it doesn't matter like she's fluent 100% yes absolutely the advice is that uh, you can give to young people wants to live the life that that you are living right now well first of all I think Bali is a great place if you're planning if you're if you want to focus on being successful um what i love about it the most is exactly what you mentioned which is the cost of life you can live a very high quality life with the amount of money that in europe wouldn't let you live can with you the amount of money that maybe in europe wouldn't even let you go to the restaurant once a week Can you give us some examples? Yes. Just, just the average. Yes. Uh, one thing that I think is very interesting is how a taxi is, can, can be so cheap. You can get a bike taxi and it will take you around for 20, 30 minutes and you pay 2-3 euros for it. Uh, food. Uh, As an Italian, I can say that I can have real Italian traditional food here for cheaper prices than any big city in Italy. Uh, and that is probably the same for most types of foods from around the world. There's so many options. It never gets boring. And I love food as a real Italian. So for me, that's a very important thing. Um, Accommodation is also very cheap. Uh, if someone wants to stay long term in Bali, I think the best advice is to find another group of people who is staying long term and share a villa. And you can honestly have a room in a beautiful, beautiful villa for three, four hundred euros a month. Prices that in Europe will give you maybe a small room, a small dark room without yeah. a window, you know. <laughs> But here maybe you can wake up and the first thing you see is a garden with a pool. Yeah. So it's very, very good about it. 
on the a, a huge bathroom your own bathroom a huge bathroom oh a huge bathroom yes a course. jungle ah uh, yes As you yeah, show me you could have a you could have a jungle <laughs> bathroom <laughs> that's not yeah. bad yeah yeah uh, last weekend uh, we got uh, a villa together with a few friends and our bathroom was literally in the jungle yeah <laughs> when i saw it i just couldn't believe it it was like yeah you were outside you go to the bathroom outside it was still very elegant but at the same time you were surrounded by palm trees and it was just beautiful it was just i think here in bali i've done things that i never expected to do just even eating at a five-star hotel and spending a totally normal price and yeah it just really makes me feel like i'm enjoying my life fully without breaking my bank nice so uh what do you think that the people uh who wants to to move to italy for work i think it depends a lot on what your priority is i think Italy is an amazing country for many different reasons, for the culture, the food, the beautiful places. And I know many people that just fell in love with Italian culture and that's all they want in their life, to live in Italy. But if we're talking strictly about career, there's a lot better places to, to make money, become successful. I like what? I would say Northern Europe is the place where you can expect to succeed more even many italians will move to germany or the netherlands or even sweden because there's better opportunities and a better quality of life i tried it i went to the netherlands and i had a great time in the netherlands but i realized that my priority is not to make that much money i accepted to make less money just to be able to uh, live in a warm place a tropical place or even just a place with a more similar lifestyle to mine which is good weather good food and even less money but i'm still happier to be honest so it depends w what your priority is if your priority is to make a lot of money you don't care about maybe bad weather or these types of things then yeah i would so, say northern europe nice so can you give us some examples about uh, the, the jobs that we can we can work remotely and uh, and your job also all right and uh, where we can find those jobs all right uh first of all my type of job is not your typical remote job i do customer service which is usually a job that is it can be done from home a lot especially since covid but usually the companies will ask you to stay in the same country at least so they won't let you travel the world while you do this job but I have traveled a lot and I've met many people who uh, travel the world while working. So I can say that the jobs that I've seen the most are video editors, uh, content creators for social media, social media managers, uh, graphic designers. You have to have a product that you can sell, something that a company will want from you and that you produce because a job like mine usually is something that uh, it's not something that needs uh, specialization how it worked for me is I built a lot of trust with my company with my manager and they trusted me to keep working well but i already had this relationship with my company before even mentioning traveling the world besides that i think you need to have a product you need to offer something that other people want 
and that they can't find everywhere. Um, the average amount of money, uh, the average amount of money that we we can we can make from from those jobs. I'm not sure, because I haven't done these jobs, and people don't like to mention the amount of money they make. Yeah. A few people that I know very well that I became close with have mentioned that with. Uh, jobs like consulting or video editing they've managed to make up to five thousand dollars a week actually uh, so i feel like there's no limit you have to be patient of course uh, many people start with uh, very little money and that's why also it's great to be in bali uh, in this case because you can still survive with that money but I've seen people grow a lot as well. So I've seen people going from uh, maybe six, seven hundred euros a month, and one year later they were doing three, four, five thousand euros a month. I think, especially with these types of uh, services that you can provide remotely, there's no limit. Uh, you can get more clients, and eventually even have people working for you i've seen people starting uh video editing jobs by themselves and eventually not even having to do it anymore just having other people doing it and making a lot more money that way so i think there's no limit uh i've seen people making as little as 500 and i've seen people making even 10,000 20,000 nice so tell us about your experience as a model <laughs> um, well, it's and, uh, and very... meeting some people. <laughs> uh, uh, let's skip that no. part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, yeah, we skip that part. But uh, <laughs> this modeling thing is very fresh. <laughs> yeah, I just signed a contract last week. And I just found out that I will be staying in Bali for at least a year now, which I'm very excited about. I don't think there's a place where I would rather be. Uh, it's not something I ever really saw myself doing before. Uh, I have met a few professionals in the business in the last months who told me that I could be a good profile for this type of job. But I never thought too much about it. I didn't want to force it. Uh, the way it happened was I have a friend here who got into that business last year and I convinced him to do it because he wasn't sure about it. And when I came back to Bali this year, uh, I asked him, so how's it going? And he told me it's going well and I think maybe you could be part of this. And I said, okay, why not? We sent a couple of pictures the agency said they wanted to meet me uh, we met and it was very good feedback so i got very excited about it uh, the idea of a new career excites me a lot it's also one of the reasons why i came to bali because i'm happy to have this customer service job that lets me travel but i want something that fulfills me a lot more and this modeling job seems like the type of the type of work that in the end of the day when i've done a photo shoot or an event it gives me satisfaction and let's see where it goes i have no expectations to be honest i'm just happy to to participate to these events and photo shoots and yeah let's see where it goes Nice. So, thank you so much, Matteo, for you sharing so all of this information about thank us. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be, to be here with you. Thank you so much. Absolutely, we're going to do the part two. All right. If, if you need the part two, just comment, uh, just put it in the comment below. And we're gonna do the the the, the part two. It's me like when I give you a video. If I can give you a video, leave it in the comments. Any thing. If I'm gonna get sad for the amount of people, leave it in the comments. Until the question that you want me to try today. So that's all. See you.